Right, hello. Hello. So, Michaela, uh, you and I have known each other for a very long time. You came to Fresh Air from the BBC. You made the leap. Just summarise for us what you were doing before you joined Fresh Air. I did. Before I made the leap, um, I was very much uh, BBC through and through. Um, I have pretty much worked for nobody else um, before that point. But uh, started in local radio, as did most of our wider team. Um, but directly before coming here, I was uh, head of audio at BBC Creative, which is the BBC's kind of in-house advertising agency, were they to make ads. So I was looking after um, a brilliant team of people there who... Um, advertising the BBC's priorities across the BBC's portfolio of radio stations. So promoting anything from the Olympics to Doctor Who to Strictly across Radio 4 uh, to Radio 1, Radio 1 Extra, uh, Radio 2. So I think it was all very much about tailoring content for different audiences and making sure it resonated with them in the right way, in it's, the right context. It's quite a unique mix, that, isn't it? Because inside the BBC, advertising generally is... A dirty word um, and branding is a dirty word so th th there's this kind of outpost of the BBC where you do think like a marketeer. Yeah absolutely and it's important because people are paying a license fee and you need them to be able to know what the options are for them to consume within that fee that, that you pay on an annual basis and I think cross-promotion is one way of the BBC doing that really well and talking about branding it's then about the kind of umbrella effect of the um, credit for that content going back to the BBC as well. If you're to consume the BBC's content outside of the BBC universe, it's about the audience understanding that it's come from the BBC. Um, and so the, the branding side of it was really important as well. So I was involved in things like commissioning the BBC's sounds audio identity um, and things like that, which is, again, part of telling your story and setting the tone for your brand, which, which is really important. So... Despite having that background, this is still a very different world. This is a very commercial, um, branding-centric world that we're in now. How have those skills transferred across? What are the similarities? What are the differences? There are so many similarities. Ultimately, what you want to do is tell stories about brands, and it doesn't matter what that brand is. I think one of the really interesting things is that a brand will come to us and say, well, we're not very interesting and it's a bit dry. And I think one of the most rewarding things is, is helping that brand understand that to the target audience, there is always something really interesting to say, say and an interesting story to tell. Um, and it's working with that brand to figure out what that is and how to frame it. Um, and it comes back to the, whether it's BBC or commercial, it comes back to the audience and who the listener is. The thing about branded content is that that listener is never going to put up with a 24 minute advert for that brand so it's what you can do to create engaging content that has a halo effect that again going back to that BBC model about getting credit that then the credit is driven back to the brand um, I think it's it's really important to understand who that listener is and audio storytelling in a podcast form is brilliant at talking to mass audiences but really brilliant at talking to niche audiences as well the other thing to consider about the audience is that their time is really precious what you want to do as a brand is fit into their portfolio of listening on a habitual basis. And so, again, understanding who that listener is and particularly where they might be listening is really important. Context of listening. Are they going to be on a run? Are they going to be on a commute? You want to make that content fit into their weekly or daily lifestyle and, and make it a good use of time for them. One of the measures of success for me is that they'll get to the end of episode one They'll then go to episode two and then they'll ask for series two because that way you know that you've deeply engaged somebody on a level whereby you've become part of the fabric of their life. And you've been doing this for a couple of years now so uh, and you're director of content, so content is your thing. How, have you, how receptive have you found clients to suggestions for being a bit more edgy, for trying different things that might not have been their initial um, idea of what a podcast for them might have sounded like? We've worked with some amazing brands who've been hugely receptive to ideas and strategies and I think once they understand that ultimately it's both in their and our interests to make something that delivers on objectives um, and there's return on investment and that people can see as a success then they're really open to different ways of experimenting with that and, and working with different 
concepts. And it's everything, as I said, from the context of listening. So one of our brands was really brave and has done a mindfulness series that fits into your two minutes of teeth brushing. And so, again, that's that's been really clever and adaptive to the way that your listener engages with the content. We've got some brilliant almost kind of hybrid models going on at the moment where people are borrowing from the grammar of hugely successful um, podcast genres and applying those in unexpected ways. So you might be uh, with Q, cross-referencing and, and, st- and borrowing from the grammar of true crime to tell stories about botanical science. We're just working on a series at the moment which is a hybrid of a relationship podcast and a financial company. And that's come out with some really distinctive and surprising ways in and ways of telling stories. And I think that's that's the key is that podcasting is growing massively as a medium and you need to understand who you're talking to and understand how to stand out in that market to create distinctive content that is not is going to lift you head and shoulders above the rest but also create an audio brand and a tone of voice and a and a personality for your brand in in audio and I don't think enough brands consider what they sound like and so podcasting is a brilliant way for them to start to explore that Um, And it's something that we really enjoy helping them do. The other element of your job is managing this growing team of producers that we have and and people picked from all sorts of different backgrounds and and apply to different clients. How would you summarise the team that we have? How do you you work with them and what do they as a collective bring to what we do? Genius, passionate, eclectic, um, such a brilliant group of people and, and such a diverse group of people with s- such different interests and I think that's that's why this works is that we will always try to match a producer with a project that either genuinely interests them or excites them or stretches them and so um, they're going to enjoy enjoy delivering and telling those stories in a really compelling way and I, I, th- I think that God, that there are people who will be able to tell these stories far better than I ever could. And I think that's that's indicative of being able to step back and say, OK, I can do this bit, but you're the one who can crack on and get <laughs> and get under the skin of this subject matter because it's either something that you're passionate about or something that you've already had an educational interest in. And it's, it's, it's kind of cross-matching the audience with the ways of telling stories with the right person to help tell that story. Thank you very much. Fresh. <laughs>